As we approach our annual Commitment Sunday on April 3rd, we want to share with you some words of encouragement from people who worship with us here at St. Timothy, and so we've prepared a short video for, uh, for you at this time for these words of encouragement. Our St. Timothy people came up and spoke to us and, and welcomed us and wished we would come back. And we found that uh, very inviting. Uh, George and I, uh, when we were younger, were very involved with Habitat and our church worked with uh, several other churches and we would build a house a year and when we were younger. And now uh, I'm still involved in serving and doing the food pantry, which I had started many years ago. So I'm very delighted to see it still around. Uh, at one time when I was younger, I had read something about some little girl went to church and she came back and some man who was non-churched asked her about it and she said, oh, it was wonderful, I enjoyed it. He said, what did you learn? She says, I don't really remember. And he said, well, then how can it be any benefit to you? She said, well, if you take a pot and you wash it, it's still clean, isn't it? Whether it remembers being washed or not. Um, there are always many things to do to keep a church running, and some of them in the background, some of them not. And I think this pandemic has showed us just how many people we need. And some people have stepped up very nicely. It gives you a feeling of fulfillment that you have helped to make our service run smoothly and be a uplifting experience for other people. And that way, it's just a, a, a wonderful thing to do. It, it fills my heart. It makes me feel like I have done something to help the church because I get so much out of it from the worship service. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy that we may rejoice in the life we share with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Genesis, the 15th chapter. God promises a childless and doubting Abram that he will have a child, that his descendants will be as numerous as the stars, and that the land of Canaan will be their inheritance. Abram's trust in God is sealed with a covenant-making ceremony, a sign of God's promise. The reading. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, 
a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Here ends the lesson, the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from Philippians, the third chapter. Although Paul's devotion to Christ has caused him to be persecuted, he does not regret the course he has taken. Writing from prison, he expresses confidence in a glorious future and encourages other Christians to follow in his footsteps. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. The news being full of uh, Eastern Europe and the war there with uh, Russia and the Ukraine and all of that goes on there brings uh, a lot of uh, discomfort to us in many ways and and fear even and uh, uncertainty and we wonder what what's going to happen we wonder uh, why this has to happen when uh, when we listen to uh, the news and hear people are fleeing for their lives because of their citizenship, uh, we wonder, how can that be? And and after all, citizenship defines people in so many ways, yet some citizens are forced to flee for their lives. Where can we find comfort? Do we find it in our own citizenship? I'd say, as Christians, we want to think on much broader scale than our personal citizenship. And I think that we have the Apostle Paul to lead us to thinking in terms that are much more broad, much more globally concerned than just for ourselves. Today we've read an excerpt from his letter to the Philippians from from chapter 3, and there he is calling on the people to follow his lead. 
Now, we say, well, you know, times are different then, but are they really? It seems that there were always uh, uh, insurrections, there were always wars, there were always uh, uh, thoughts about safety and personal property and what's going to happen to me, even there. And Paul says in this part of his letter to the Philippians, our citizenship is in heaven. Now, Paul makes that statement as a Roman citizen. Uh, and when we read about his own history, we find that, that he was born a citizen of the, of the empire of Rome, and that for, therefore he received uh, certain rights and privileges that were not a part of everybody's lives during that time. But we also know that even though he was able to claim the rights of uh, a citizen, just like those people in Italy, Paul also claimed a heritage from his Jewish family. And, uh, and he knew well the stories of that heritage. So is this a divided citizenship? Is he Jewish under the ro rule of Rome, or is he Roman that happens to identify with Jew? Paul says no. He has his eyes fixed on his uh, citizenship in heaven. So he does know the stories. He knows that, that his ethnic heritage means he is not an Egyptian, though his people came out of Egypt. He is not Canaanite, even though his people lived in the land of Canaan. He is not Babylonian, even though his people were, of, uh, were in captivity for over 60 years in Babylon. And he's speaking to Philippians, who also have a similar mix in their heritage. After all, they are living in a, the city of Philippi, that city was founded by Philip of Macedon, father of Alexander the Great. But they were, not, uh, uh, they were not under Greece at the time. In fact, they were under the Roman Empire at the time. Roman by the conquest of Mark Anthony. Still, with all this mixed baggage, Paul says that our citizenship is in heaven. Paul saw his earthly heritage could lead many lives to become enemies of the cross. After all, Rome was a great enslaver of people at the time. Uh, on the other hand, his, his uh, ethnic heritage had a way of, uh, of excluding others because of their, uh, their way of either ignoring the Torah or following a Torah so strict that it excluded others, he saw that heritage be makes one an enemy of the cross. So his plea was that the church not follow their heritage, but their life imitating him. Do as he does, he says, which is, Fix your eyes on the cross of Jesus. That is our heritage. That, uh, that would be the example that makes the difference because the church of Christ tells the story of Jesus' life. And those stories remind us of who we really are. We are the people who put away all hatred of others. We declare ourselves as ones who love one another, love our friends, love our neighbors, and love our enemies. We seek not to destroy, but to heal, to build up and not tear down. We look at Paul, imitate him, and we imitate him in his practice of fixing his eye on the cross. But make sure we understand it is the cross of Jesus Christ. It is not the cross of Spartacus who led a Roman slave rebellion. This is not the cross of thieves who steal from others. This is not the cross of Barabbas who committed murder. 
killing in the name of his own insurrection. This is the cross of Christ. And when we look at the cross of Christ, we hear Jesus' words. As Jesus hangs on the cross and sees those who have persecuted him and brought him to that moment of death, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Jesus says, into your hands I commit my spirit. And he says, from the cross, it is finished. So we are citizens that turn to that standard. And how are we citizens? We are citizens because of our calling. Called by God's Holy Spirit into new life. Called to be baptized. We are born anew as citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Our calling now is to daily live our lives of faith. Here, we gather in Lent. We gather around a, cult, a countercultural image of what it's all about. We gather around the cross of Jesus Christ and are citizens of that realm, the kingdom of heaven, the realm of eternal life, as it's called in the Gospel of John. That is where we are to live. It's a powerful freedom and responsibility to know where our true land lies. Now reach for your true passport, your citizenship to the kingdom of heaven, and see how that makes all the difference in how you will live your daily life. Amen. I invite you to stand and join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of oppression, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You hear us when we cry to you. Attend to those expecting a child and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generations. 
give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are ended and who now rest with you. On the final day, gather all of us with them in your loving arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.